I'm here by the sea. Good morning, it's April 3rd here in uh, beautiful spring Nova Scotia and then today I'm going to find some squash in my tulip garden. Hi, it's Greg Otten here with MaritimeGardening.com. Hey there, it's Greg Otten with MaritimeGardening.com and today I'm going to talk about beets. And some lessons I learned this year about growing them and starting them early, starting them early under plastic, and some you know things that went right and things that went wrong, and uh, ju just to give you uh, share that information with you um, in, in case you're interested. Now, I don't think beets get enough uh, play in gardening discussions. Uh, and all these sort of old-fashioned vegetables or whatever that people's grandparents liked, uh, they like them for a reason. They're they're good for you. They're easy to grow. Uh, there's many options for storing them, uh, and uh, you know if you live in a relatively cold climate, they're they're well suited to to growing in a cold climate. They're also fairly pest resistant, I've found, compared to other things. Uh, you know, when I look around my garden, the main crop, the main thing that's hard to grow is kale. <coughs> it grows well. Uh, let me rephrase that. It grows great. Uh, but just about everything that flies or crawls wants a piece of that kale. Um, more than any other plant that I grow, the kale gets attacked. Uh, slugs like it, flea beetles like it, and the cabbage moths, white fly, they like it. Everything, the, 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 the handful of uh, you know, relatively benign uh, natural-based uh, pesticides I use, I use to handle that, just, just for the growing of kale. <laughs> Everything else seems to just take care of itself. I don't need to use anything on anything else. And beets are among those as well. I like Swiss chard. And if you if you eat a green from beets or Swiss chard, there's an extremely bitter, sharp taste. And I imagine that's the oxalic acid content in those leaves is relatively high. Um, you cook it, and you know you have it with other things, and uh, it tastes great. Uh, but as a result of that, they're they're fairly pest resistant and. Uh, you know, generally speaking, if they have everything they need, they seem to, uh, at least in my experience here in this place, uh, take care of themselves. The other advantages of growing them is that they're just uh, they store really well. I mean, if you if you want to keep some into the winter, I mean, you, you literally just harvest them, you know, uh, dust off the you know dry them out just the way it's the same as storing a potato. You you pick them out of the ground, you sort of dust off the dirt. Um, you don't wash them; you just dust the dirt off let them dry out a bit and then just store them in tears in a cardboard box and stick, stick them somewhere cool and you can just take them and use them as you need uh, right into, I don't know, uh, I never seem to I eat them very quickly because uh, I like them, my wife likes them, my kids tolerate them, um, but they'll keep uh, well into uh, February, March. Um, they start to get a bit uh, soft in, into late February and March, but they still taste good and in fact I find when they get soft for some reason they seem to taste a bit better. It could be that the uh, the root uh, is beginning to convert to sugars, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, anyway, I started my beets this year uh, very early. The other thing I love to do with them is pickle them. I love pickled beets. I'm the only person in my house that really likes that. And I might make a couple gallons of them and I, I eat them all. <laughs> I don't share them with anyone. No, no one here wants them and, and I don't give them to friends. I eat, I eat it all myself. Uh, I love pickled beets. and um, We like them roasted and I like the greens as well. So I wanted to get uh, a lot going this year, and I got uh, three different varieties that uh, provided me uh, this year. And I planted them all under plastic in, uh, I can't remember exactly when, but I would say mid to late March under one of these uh, plastic domes that I use in my garden. You can see one right over there in, in the frame. Uh, and uh, they took off and they grew. Now, the instructions say plant as soon as the soil can be worked. Uh, so, you know, I put the dome over my garden and as soon as it thawed out, that's when I planted it. And they germinated and they grew and they were growing really well. And um, then I wanted to use my dome to get something else started, so I moved it to another garden. But it, I, I, I would have been <coughs> early May, I think. And that particular week we just had some really cold nights. And the frost, uh, we had some really hard frosts. You know, I figure if a, an instruction on a package says plant as soon as the soil can be worked, then 
that plant can handle some frost. Um, and in many cases, I think that's the case. Um, certainly with lettuce and spinach, that's the case. You can plant uh, with uh, uh, carrots, uh, parsnips. Um, you know, when they're growing, it, it doesn't seem to matter what happens to them, they'll take it. Uh, but certain things I find they don't seem to like that so much. Uh, uh, kale doesn't seem to like it so much. When it's, when it's full grown, when it's mature, it can handle uh, the cold. Um, but uh, when it's a baby, and it might be the roots, maybe it's it, perhaps the roots, maybe when there's a really cold night. Uh, we had a couple, you know, this is in May, but we had nights where the, the ground actually heaved. I don't know if you've ever seen that, but the ground, you know, the, the water that's in the soil freezes and it, it sort of you know, expands. So I, I imagine if a plant has a, a very young root, uh, it probably doesn't like that because the plants seem to suffer uh, kale and uh, beets. So I took my dome off and within a week uh, the plants are really messed up and only a few of them seem to make it. So let, let me show you here. Alright, so you can see the be this, this whole garden is beets. And you can see they're of different heights. Now, just in case this is your first video of mine, uh, in between the rows of beets, I put strips of cardboard down to keep uh, weeds and stuff from happening. It's it's kind of like a mulching, but it's a really cheap, effective mulch because it's a you know you put put cardboard down, then you put some you know hay or whatever you've got over the cardboard, and you basically get a weed-proof mulch, and the cardboard will break down and feed the soil. So it works. It's a really easy way to minimize uh, whatever weeding you might need to do in your garden. But anyway, you can see, let me zoom this in a bit here, that in any given row there's like big spinach and then like small spinach. The big spinach is the spinach that survived that freezing. Then all the sort of smaller ones are ones I had to, I had to replant, right? Yes, they're a bit tightly packed. I have to thin this. I, I tend to overseed and, and thin. I, I find that works way better. Um, you can say back back there, right? All these small baby ones coming along. I mean, it's warm enough to have the dome off now, right? We're into uh, this is the second of June. But if I'd left that dome on one week longer, <laughs> all my spinach would look like these nice big ones. One week. It's all it took to screw up an entire garden. Just being a little ambitious and, you know, that's a learning process and, and you know, it's, it's not a big deal, it's not the end of the world. Uh, I had to spend another 30 minutes planting new spin. It just sets everything back and, you know, when you're a gardener you want everything to be optimal and ideal and work out really well. So, uh, lesson learned there. So that would be my advice to anyone that's trying to start something earlier if you want to plant beets under plastic or whatever you can do that but I would leave the plastic on until you're uh, well beyond any risk of a super hard frost uh, and there's still some I think even this week we got some nights where it's going to get down to four degrees Celsius and there, there's maybe a risk of frost I'm not sure I'm not worried about these it's the nights where it gets down to like you know zero when it's freezing when when the ice is freezing and you know you have a bucket with water and the water freezes in the bucket which is the kind of nights we had that mess these spinach or these uh, beet greens up. Anyway, uh, yeah, just a quick video talking about that, some lessons learned. I'm, I'm sure there's going to be people uh, chiming in on the comments saying, well, you're not supposed to plant anything till the first full moon in May and Victoria Day weekend. That's a, an, an event here in Canada around the uh, end of May when we celebrate uh, the Queen of England, <laughs> Queen Victoria's birthday. Because we're technically we te technically still have a queen, she's on all our money, um, so we all get uh, a day off on the weekend, and that's a day when people tend to plant a lot of things. I, I plant many things long before that. Um, there's certain things you can't plant before that, but anything that's tough, uh, peas, a lot of greens, lettuce, um, all those things can be planted before then. And if you put them under plastic, they'll grow a lot faster. Uh, but it seems to me, based on my observations, that some things can handle being uncovered sooner than other things. And I would put you know, kale and uh, Swiss chard and beets in that category. I wouldn't, I would be reluctant to take the lid off too soon with those. I would leave the lid on 
uh, you know, well, well into late May if, if you can. You know, if, if you need the lid somewhere else, move them, or if you're uh, really, really confident that you're through the... Uh, and then late May, it's relative. I'm, I'm speaking to where I live here. Where you live, you know, things might be ahead or behind that. Uh, but here, uh, we can still get some really, really cold nights in May. It, it can happen. So, uh, anyway, I hope that's uh, helpful. I hope that gave you some ideas. Uh, if you enjoyed this content, please like, share, subscribe, and uh, check out my podcast, MaritimeGardening.com. Until next time, get out there, get at it, have fun in your garden. Thanks for watching.